And now more information on the story of over 100 missing children located during a one-day streep in Michigan's Wayne County. It was a joint effort between Michigan State Police, the U.S. Marshal Service, and other Michigan law enforcement agencies. Many were missing children, at least one was homeless, and at least, th at least three of the cases are thought to be connected to sex trafficking. The sweep is drawing more attention to just how prevalent sex trafficking and the abuse and, ex of, and exploitation of children really is today. For more, we are joined by Donna Hughes from the group Enough is Enough, which is dedicated to making the Internet safer for children and families. Donna, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. I think it might surprise some, but how prevalent is child sex trafficking in the United States today? It's a growing problem. In fact, the overall human trafficking industry in the United States is estimated to earn the traffickers over $32 billion a year. So this is about the money and women and children are the inventory. So I think we need to recognize this is not something that's just happening overseas and come in countries like Thailand and, and other poorer countries. This is happening in our backyard. And parents need to understand that no child is immune, not even their own child. Well, that's the thing. Are we looking at, is there more cases do you find in, people say, well, not in my backyard because I live in a safe suburban, commu a suburban community. Others say, you know what, yes. I actually live in a big farm. Is there an area that's actually considered to be safer than the other right now uh, from these types of crimes? No, there's not, no, there's not. In fact, we, we see when there are big events like the Super Bowl and other, other events where there are businessmen with pocket, you know, with money coming in, that trafficking is going up in those big cities. So there, there really isn't, and, and, and this, this kind of thing is sometimes, any, anytime there's even a crossroads of highways and truck, trucking lanes and trains and, and ports of call are all places where, where trafficking is happening. Because when you start to think about women and children being moved like chattel, then, then you think about what are the mechanisms that they're being, uh, how are they traveling? And so even um, airplanes, uh, so, so you, you, you just really never know. It can be, it can be anyone. And, um, and parents need to really understand that, that their kids can be recruited at school. So there's a lot of grooming that happens, but a lot of it is also happening online. And the sex trafficker is just like the sexual predator. They are looking for vulnerable kids. And the easiest place to find them often is online and on these social media sites. Well, that's really chilling considering that the rise and the use yeah. of social media and the Internet by our children today is just continuing to grow and will continue to grow. Um, the FBI and other policing agencies are also fighting child pornography. Can you try to explain the relationship po between pornography and child sex trafficking? Well, absolutely. There, there's a clear um, line, if you will. One fuels the other. So if you look at sexual exploitation, and you start with here being pornography, pornography is creating a demand for women and children, and in particular trafficked victims, because so much of the hardcore pornography now is very extreme, very deviant, very violent. Um, the same with the child pornography, and oftentimes those that are portrayed in the pornography and in the child pornography are traffic victims. But even if they're not traffic victims, they are wetting the appetite of the predator and the user of the trafficked victims. So there, there's a, a clear link and a fueling factor. So this is just like the drug crisis. We can't just go after the opioid crisis without also tackling the cocaine crisis, the heroin crisis, and everything else. The same thing with sexual exploitation. We've got to crack down on our federal pornography laws, the obscenity laws that are on the books, as well as child pornography and as well as trafficking. Because if we just focus on trafficking and we don't deal with the other ones as aggressively, then, then we're playing whack-a-mole. And that's really what we're doing right now. As, as well as we're doing on the trafficking cases, we've, we've got to start getting our obscenity laws enforced because they really are the fueling factor. Okay, so Donna, I have to help our audience. I've got to tell them how they can actually help to keep their own kids safe from online predators. Are there warning signs that we need yes. to be looking for out in the community as we go about our day? 
Well, yes, yeah, some of their warning, warning signs online and offline, but certainly if you see an adult with a child that may seem to be scared or afraid, um, that seems a little out of place, just report it. I mean, better safe than sorry. Also with your own child, we always recommend that you use the parental control tools on every single internet-enabled device, and that includes monitoring technology. And help your kids to understand, and we've got a lot of information on our website, hopefully it's up on your screen, that you cannot detect a disguised predator. Predators oftentimes will build a friendship with a child online, and then that child begins to trust that person. And sometimes they'll pull away from their family and from their friends. They be may become more and more secretive. They may become more curious about sex than they would ordinarily uh, for their age. They also might start receiving gifts and these kinds of things. So it's very important that if, if parents let their child have an internet connected device, which includes gaming devices, that that parent must be 100% committed to be a good cyber parent of that device. Or like your last guest said, you know, the best, the, the best solution is not to let them on, uh, on an internet-enabled device if you're not going to make sure it's safe. Donna, thank you so much. What a chilling topic, but thank you for everything you're, you're doing to keep our kids safe. Hey YouTube, thanks for checking out our channel. We hope you enjoyed the video. We have tons of content for you just like this. For more of RT America's one-of-a-kind news and analysis, be sure to subscribe and never stop questioning more.